In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to place an afterthought heel into a sock. An afterthought heel works equally well with either a toe up or a cuff down construction. Traditionally, I learned to make a sock with a traditional heel flap and gusset. You'll notice with an afterthought heel, there is no gusset and no flap. In fact, if you look at it from this point of view, if you flatten the sock out, really just looks like a sock tube and you flip it over and your afterthought heel ends up looking like another toe. I thought this might not work for me because of my high instep, but I can assure you it works perfectly and I'll show you how to make that adjustment if you need a little extra space in the instep. The way that I was taught to put in an afterthought heel was to use row markers of a contrasting yarn. And then we're going to go in and we're going to cut this row in between after we've picked up these stitches on our needles again. Yes, cut the knitting. No, it will not fall apart. I, I promise. So let's get started on this sock here. I've knit this to the point where I know I want my heel to be placed. So this is um, a cuff down construction. And I've knit across my front stitches and I've knit across my back stitches. So this brings me to here. So my yarn would be moving forward to the front row. What I'm going to do now is take my waist yarn of a contrast color. You should try to choose a, a waist yarn. I, I didn't particularly, this is the yarn that I'm going to be using for the heel, but normally I would try to pick something maybe that has a cotton blend or that's a little higher twist. You want to be careful, so I've, I've slid my needle my needle through so that it's just my cable in the stitches, so they're sitting on there pretty loosely. Uh, and you're going to just slide your darning needle through and pick up each stitch along the row. You want to uh, be careful that you're just putting the needle through the stitch and not splitting the stitch. And just pull that through. So I'll go ahead and I'll pick the rest of these up. Now, once you finish picking up the last of the stitches, just pull your yarn through, take the needle off, and give your waist yarn just a little tug. So you can see it's all the way through. Now, we turn the sock back over, position ourselves, and I'm just going to knit one row across the front of the sock. So now I finished the front, I'm just going to turn the sock over and we're going to work back across through the back. This is going to become the row in between the stitches. What you have to be careful of in this row is that when you're working across, just make sure that you're only picking up the stitch. Make sure that you're not picking up the waist yarn as well. Okay, so now you can see that I have knit all the way across and my waist yarn is actually tucked inside of that row of stitches. You see that down below? So the next part of the step is that you're going to work all the way across the front again.
So now we find ourselves back onto the back row again. You have the one plain row, so we're going to knit one more row across, and then we're going to put in our second waist yarn row. So you just work this row as normal until we get to the end. Now we'll take our second piece of waist yarn, put it onto a needle, and just work our way back through the row with the waist yarn. Once that's done, you've got two rows of waist yarn with one regular row in between. Or to have a better look at it, it would actually look just like this. So from this point, you actually just carry on and work the remainder of your sock. In this case, I worked the rest of the sock. I finished off the toe. And now I'm ready to cut my yarn and place these stitches back on our needle. So I usually just slide my hand inside like this and pick up a needle and start working my way across. So you can see where the waist yarn is and all you're going to do is slide your needle in underneath that and just start picking up those stitches. Making sure that you don't hook the waist yarn because it will be a little trickier to pull it out if you do. One of the nice, really nice features of the Afterthought Heel too is that you can use, uh, it, it works for any size sock, like it, it doesn't matter the stitch count, there's no real figuring out with this. Once you have the first row done, you just give a little tug on your waist yarn, pull that out, onto the second row. So now I have two needles in here. I can pull out my second piece of waist yarn. And there I've had a look, I've caught, you can see where it's not tugging out. Be a little aggressive. Okay, so now I have all of my stitches back onto two needles. And you can see that this row of knit stitches is in between. What you're going to do, let's get some sharp scissors. And I like to go about halfway through. Now I keep my fingers underneath here so you can see where my fingers are so I don't have any risk of going all the way through to get anything on this side. You're only going to cut one stitch. And trust me, just because you cut one stitch is not all gonna fly apart. So the easiest thing I do is start about at the halfway point Tuck the scissors underneath that's that one stitch, pull it up, and give it a snip. You can see I've created a hole. 
So then I just use one of my needle ends and you start working your way across, picking that yarn out. Just keep going. Now here's the little tip to avoid getting any gaps in the corners whatsoever. You can see each stitch is a V. Leave one and a half of those V's in place. Right here, one and a half. That's where I split my yarn. Okay, and once you've done one side, just flip your work over and you're gonna pick out the other side. Exactly the same, leaving that last one and a half stitches at the end. So you can just keep picking out these stitches across the row until you get to the other side. Just be mindful again to leave one and a half V stitches. This is a little bit of a dark yarn, so it's hard to see, but that will avoid the gap. So I've got one, two, three, four legs there, and I want three. There we go. So now just tuck in your loose ends. You can see what you've got is, turn around here, a sock where a heel needs to go. So you're all ready. All of your stitches are contained on the needles. Everything is safe. I generally, you won't be using these anymore. I generally pick up on the bottom of the foot just I don't know, I feel it's a little cleaner that way. That's just me. I'm gonna put some contrasting heels in these socks. You're basically just knitting now across the rows. Picking up the stitches as you go. Once you reach the end of the row, I sometimes find, depending on how I've picked up the stitches, that very last stitch, you won't knit it as it's oriented on the needle. Well, in this case, I would. Sometimes it would end up twisted, so your stitch would come out like this. Just make sure that it's facing the right way. And it's same for the first stitch on this needle. If I were to pick it up and knit it this way, you can see that that would create a twist. So for the first stitch, I will knit it through the back of the loop. Just to get that stitch to lay nice. And carry on all the way across. Now, I had mentioned earlier in the video about increasing the instep to give yourself a little bit more room. What I generally do for myself, and this is trial and error, you will have to do this a few times just to find out what's your perfect sock, but I will knit five rows straight before I start to do any decreases for the heel at all. 
And I find that that five rows gives me just enough room that it's my perfect instep. So once I have five rows complete, you can start to get a general feel for what the heel is going to look like, how it sits into the sock. This is the point that I'll start doing my decreases. And generally I do my decreases like you just as you would on a toe. So on the first row, I would knit one, slip, slip, knit, knit to the last two, the last three stitches, knit two together, knit one, and the same on the other side. Then you would knit one row plain. So just keep repeating that pattern. I would knit that uh, heel down to 12 stitches. And at that point, I kitchener the heel off. That gives me this sort of a look on the heel. And you can see this, this is where the extra five rows are that I knit. And that is what gives me that little bit of an extra allowance up in here. So that is pretty much the afterthought heel. Probably one of my favorite things too, because I'm a little bit obsessive compulsive. And this is what I like to do in my sock drawer. It gives you a nice fat little sock roll. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned uh, all of the steps that you need to be successful with an afterthought heel. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave those down below. Bye for now. One last PS, if you're interested in either of the yarns and wondering, because they're gorgeous, this is Dolphina by Timber Yarns, and this is A Morning at the Lake by Ravenswood Fiber Co.